Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar with teddybaldessar.com. In this video, we're looking at a new lineup from Louis Erard with their 39 millimeter stone dials with small seconds. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com as an authorized dealer. So in this video, we'll go through a deep dive on these timepieces, go through some just final considerations at the end of the video, but also throughout, if you have just further questions or you wanna buy these watches, check out the link in the description down below to the product page. But guys, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at these watches. Louis Erard, despite being a brand name that dates back to 1893, was a dormant brand for years before given a surge of new life in the 21st century. Now today, Louis Erard focuses on providing unique and interesting watch designs while showing reverence to the artisanal crafts such as enameling, guilloche, and utilizing stone dials, all typically and surprisingly priced between $2,000 to $4,000, undercutting other proponents of these traditional watchmaking techniques by a wide margin, to say the least. Along with this focus, now head of the brand, Manuel M, also has a habit of collaborating with designers and architects and producing some of the more striking avant-garde watch designs in recent years including the brand's recent efforts with Elaine Silberstein. But today we're talking about something that is a bit more mass appeal, a new range of 39 millimeter petite second models that also utilize these eye-catching and striking dials, especially when you consider their price range of right around $2,500. They're available in three different takes. You have the Aventurine dial, the Malachite, and the Lapis Lazuli, and they're all with this sub-seconds configuration. Diving into the overview portion of this review and a conversation on case and wearing experience presented by these new watches, we have restrained dimensions that are likely to work well on a majority of wrists out there. At 39 millimeters in diameter, 12.5 millimeters thick, and a 45.8 millimeter when measuring the lug tip to lug tip, these new petite second models are beyond just a bit thick for the dress watch, still going to wear great on a wide variety for wrists and being really true to that 39 millimeter measurement, if not smaller. Set between 20 millimeter lugs, each variant from this trio opts for a color matching leather strap intended to augment the barrage of color coming from these striking dial presentations. These straps are subtle and well-made, tapering to 18 millimeters and straightforward with a pin buckle with the brand's signature. Personally, I'd be interested to see these on a wide variety of more toned down straps to allow the dials to even extend further into the spotlight. Case finishing and architecture are barred from the former petite second models with a smoothly rounded bezel, curvaceous case flanks, and downswept lugs that hit a scroll of architecture at their tips. At three, a prominent 6.1 millimeter crown manages winding and setting engraved with a Louis Erard signature on its face and is set up for easy gripping. Between the crown and the snap-on exhibition case back, these watches are rated for a relatively standard 50 meters of water resistance, though I doubt anyone is going to try to use these for any extensive water activity anyway. Gazing back over this watch's front-facing surface, we have a slightly domed sapphire crystal treated with anti-reflective coating on both sides, keeping watch over this new collection's biggest move, a trio of striking stone dials. Now, while Louis Erard in the modern era is perhaps best known for its use of the regulator dial, originally utilized in watchmaking workshops to keep multiple watchmakers on the same clock. This collection leans into a classic small second display. Cut from a single piece of aventurine malachite or lapis lazuli, the dial then receives simple printing denoting the minutes at the outskirts with the neatly applied Arabic indices at the even hour positions and smaller dart indices elsewhere. The handset is the brand's own unique shape designed to evoke the silhouette of fir trees near Louis Erard's uh, Swiss Jura. At six, a white silver small seconds register sits just below the level of the dial's stone surface, impressively executed with a concentric circular grain and another tiny set of dart-shaped indices at its cardinal points, connected with an eye-catching slender crosshair motif. Another fir tree-shaped hand manages the running seconds, with the only other element of note being the printed brand signature at noon. It's important to to remember with these stone dials that the luster of the materials is much more than surface level, giving these watches an impressive degree of three-dimensionality while also massively increasing the perceived value on display. At $2,500, it's difficult to think of anything that really comes close in terms of this style and execution with a semi-precious stone as a primary dial material. As is the brand's custom, Louis Erard manages the opulence of visual display with a more off-the-shelf third-party caliber, helping in crafting its value 
position with this particular movement coming from Salida. Now the SW261 within this petite second is essentially the small second version of the SW200, which is itself Salida's near identical copy of the ubiquitous ETA 2824. With that in mind, the caliber offers relatively pedestrian specs, including a 38 hour power reserve, but is among the most reliable proven calibers in the world, having been included in millions of watches to date. It's not extraordinary by any means, but exactly the right movement to dependably get the job done while also making the surprising price point of the stone dial petite second models a possibility. As an important note, these are also a labore grade versions of this caliber, meaning they are adjusted to a relatively fine degree, even if their level of decoration leaves something to be desired. Speaking anecdotally to timekeeping, we tested out three different examples here. The Aventurine was running at plus three to plus five seconds a day. The Lapis version was running at plus three to plus five seconds a day, and the Malachite zero to plus four seconds a day. So now to unpack looking at these Louis Erard stone dial edition sub seconds. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons here. Now, first beginning with some of the cons, number one is Louis Erard is a well-established brand, but still lesser known than the conventional big group brands that might scare some people away. I will say that the brand equity for this brand, especially when you're looking at their Elaine Silverstein pieces is quite strong. They hold their value, if not increasing value over the secondary market, but these are not gonna necessarily follow the same suit. They're not gonna be as in demand, but still, if you want something different, that is the route of going in this uh, direction here. But it is important to note that this isn't going to be a major group brand. Salida based calibers as well, that could be a positive and negative, but some people might not liking how this is starting to get into the mid $2,000 price range and you're seeing Salida based calibers in here. Uh, you are getting an elevated grade with some nice accuracy in the process, but I think that is worth mentioning as well. Moving over to the pro side though, the number one reason why these watches are great is going to be the dials. I love the fact that you're getting these uh, semi-precious type of stone dials in this price range. There's not many brands messing around with this. You see sometimes micro brands going in this route, but to see this trio being offered up, and I think it looks great in the sub seconds configuration. Finishing apart from that is well done on the dial, especially cases are a bit more utilitarian in their approach, not having the utmost refinement, but still well done. The design is very clean and eccentric in its own way while still remaining classy. But really the reason why I wanted to cover these watches is Louis Erard is very good at giving you a taste of independent watchmaking at a price that is easier to stomach. If this had a different brand name on the dial, think about doubling the price, if not more. But what I love about these is these semi-precious stone dials. I don't know if anybody even knows that these exist. And if you're somebody that is tired of the same old, same old from the major brands and wants something different, these are ones that certainly should be on your radar and a brand that certainly should be as well. All right, guys, well, that's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. That does help out the channel and lets you stay informed when we release new content. Also, if you like what you saw here from the watch here today, uh, definitely check it out on teddybaldister.com. It'll be in the description down below. TeddyBallStar.com is an authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And it helps with us just continuing to make this content, helping to help foster this new generation of watch enthusiasts. At least that's my goal. So any purchase does help as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.